Hey guys, I just finished my finals and I've got a really cool thing I want to show you today. If you have seen my last video, you'll know that this is a plot clock, which draws the time using a UV LED and two servo motors. Pretty cool, huh? So my next project expands on this idea with this contraption right here. And what you see here looks a little crazy, but it is a UV uh, laser instead of an LED and two stepper motors on either side and it works like a tripod. So I'm going to show you what this can do and uh, how to set up your Raspberry Pi W to control these motors and the laser. So stay tuned. Okay Google, what's the laser report? Firing laser. So as you can see uh, from the video, hopefully, uh, there's a few things that changed dramatically with, uh, with this new invention here. Um, number one, it can do more than just draw the, uh, the digital time. It can do the analog time with the minute and the hour hands. It can also do just text messages. I can tell it to you know, laser something and it will draw that message on the wall. And I can do that from anywhere, not just with, in my house. I can be you know, 100 miles away or across the world and it'll still draw that message on the wall so I can send messages to, to my girlfriend or something. Um, so hopefully she's wearing the glasses. And uh, yeah, so what's cool about this is that it's also connected to the Internet of Things, um, the IFTT, IFFT. So it's an if that, if that, then this or something, IFTTT, I don't know. Um, Anyways, that allows me to uh, talk to Google and Google will actually fire my laser for me. So that is a pretty cool upgrade from the last one. Um, and I'm gonna show you how to set up uh, this on a blank Raspberry Pi. So, quick word of warning, this project uses a 405 nanometer UV laser um, and that's a particularly dangerous wavelength. So I always wear my safety laser glasses when using this. Even though it's classified as a pointer, um, I just, I just want to be sure that my eyes are safe, so. Okay, so for this project, we're going to need two stepper motors. These are the 28BYJ48s. Uh, they're pretty cheap, about a dollar on Amazon uh, per piece, maybe two dollars. And they come with this, uh, I think it's a UN2003 uh, uh, stepper driver. You need two of these guys. Um, you also need to have all the printed parts, um, which I'll include in the Thingiverse uh, link, all the STLs for those. Um, we also need a Raspberry Pi. Um, you could use uh, the larger ones, like the Raspberry 3 and the Raspberry 2 and, and 1, um, but I'm using a W here, and that's what the 3D print was made for. So. Um, you're also going to need a 405 nanometer uh, UV laser. I got this one on eBay. It's classified as a um, a class two laser pointer, um, and it's under five milliwatts. But I'm not buying that. I think these guys are put out a little bit more power than they say they do. So again, wear safety glasses when using this. Um, I don't want to be responsible for someone screwing up their eyes, so or for screwing up my own, for that matter. So I always wear laser safety glasses, and that, those are the green things you see here. We're also gonna need a lot of these M3 fasteners here. These are, uh, I think, eight millimeters long, yeah. Also, get yourself some wire. I'm using some 22 gauge uh, wire I pulled out of some Cat5 cable. Okay, and uh, three zip ties uh, for some cable management stuff. 
Okay, we also need a little transistor. Um, this one is a MPS2, 22A, 012 NPN transistor. You can look at that. So here's the result of the 3D print. Uh, everything looking pretty good. Got to take it off my glass plate and uh, put it together. Okay, so uh, we should do the soldering first, so that way uh, get them closer together and the cables. Eh, but we'll do the soldering first, just so the cables look nicer. Anyways, so Raspberry Pi is going there. Uh, these DPIO pins are going to be closer to the inside. Uh, these uh, stepper motors or stepper drivers are mounted right uh, there with the cables uh, facing outward. Um, so we need to measure the distance from these pins to here um, and then cut wires to length um, with this guy coming in right there. So here's the schematic. Uh, this should be in the description below. Um, we're going to be connecting those stepper drivers you see at the top to the Raspberry Pi W. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to thread uh, these guys on uh, here, except instead of having these casings on, I'm going to use these guys um, and put a little solder on them between these and the pins. That way it's a, it's a secure connection. And then I'm just going to have some heat shrink that I'm going to put over it. If you don't want to do that, you can just plug these directly into, uh, into there with the casing. And it should work, but I, I like things a little bit more secure, so skip that step if you, if you want. Okay, do that to both sides, and then we're going to put on uh, red and black cables to the uh, five and uh, ground there on, on both sides, so hang tight. Okay, now that we have the uh, pins, or sorry, the wires all on uh, the driver boards, we are going to solder them to the Raspberry Pi W based on this schematic here, which is included in the description below on Thingiverse. Now that we got those soldered up, we're going to mount these, and then we'll just do the last power cables. Okay, so this goes here, and then those go there. Yeah. As you can see in the video, I'm putting the Raspberry Pi on backwards. Do not do that. God, my screwdriver is flaking all over the place, so it's getting, it's been worn. It's, it's uh, seen some action. Okay. Um, next, uh, let's, let's mount the motors. Um, okay. Um, these holes right here, if you can't uh, thread them, because uh, these aren't, uh, these aren't filleted, um, because this was the print side, the flat print side, you couldn't fail it because uh, they would be printing on nothing. Um, so just take a little screwdriver and uh, kind of dig those out if you, if you can't thread them. Okay, and then we're going to take the uh, first part right here and uh, attach it to the other motor. So this is going to be press fit onto here, like so. You have to press pretty hard to get that to go over the right. Okay. Um, if it's uh, if it's not a great press fit, if it's loose at all, I put these holes here so you can screw into it and uh, clamp down on that. It should be one on both sides. Okay. Next. Oh wait, I'm an idiot. This. This goes on like that. Yeah. So same story, if you can't get the thread, just use some scissors um, to get that hole a little bigger on this guy. And uh, then it should thread fine. So 
I'll go ahead and mount this guy, press on to there. The reason I told you to put these guys on is so we can kind of coil these around and then we'll tighten these guys down so that way we have a little bit of uh, cable management. Okay, so on the bottom here you can see I, uh, I clamped down some of the cables. Um, this one still needs a little bit of slack because this thing is going to be rotating like this. Um, it's kind of interesting that those light up. Anyways, uh, they're going to be rotating like this and I think I'm going to use some, some tape to make this portion right here elevated. That way it can have some clearance over that. So. You guys, I just realized that I um, put the Raspberry Pi on backwards. Okay, well, <laughs> so I routed the uh, USB cable this way. Uh, <laughs> on yours, I would suggest having these on the outside. It it would be a smarter way to do things. I just didn't feel like unsoldering everything. Okay, next we're going to uh, attach the the uh, this guy. So this is just press fit on there, same way. It's going to be pretty hard to push on, so... Um, tight tolerances there, uh, but since we're not using batteries, we're using the power of the Raspberry Pi, uh, or from the Raspberry Pi, we open it up, and then I put a zip tie on the button here, so it's an, always the on position, and we're going to be soldering on to these, or, or to this spring right here, and to the, the casing. So uh, when I dissected it, I found that three volts uh, went through the threads here. On the inside, on the spring, we have ground, so we're going to be wiring uh, black wire to the inside here and a red one to the outside, and then putting them together. Yeah, so that's some nice braided wire for this. Um, what I did here is I, I tinned the inside, and uh, same with the spring here. Okay, so I have that uh, black wire wrapped around the inside, and I'm just going to apply the solder. Remember to keep your solder tip shiny. And uh, I'm going to melt uh, these two together. So, okay, so I'm going to take this guy and just slide it all in. Nice. Okay, with this uh, flat side facing you, uh, you're going to take this left arm here. Uh, it's the ground of your laser. Gonna twist it around there and then solder it on. Uh, with this front face out again, put it in these two holes right behind those two red ones. Okay, the last uh, thing we have to do is put this uh, positive lead of the laser into the 3.3 uh, GPIO, and then we're good. guys thank you so much for checking out my video this is the result of the build today on the next video I'm going to be showing you how to upload the programs I built onto your Raspberry Pi W and how to connect your Raspberry Pi to the Internet of Things and interface with Google Assistant or Alexa so hang out for that and uh, thanks for watching